What we're doing here in Israel, no one is doing in the US. And I can tell you that this car is actually more convenient and more affordable than a gasoline car uh, today. Shai Agassi is the man behind a bold new plan to end the world's dependence on oil. Um, well, you, you know, you're putting in nearly a billion dollars into this, you and your people, it's a lot of money. That's nothing compared to what they're putting into the ground every day to dig a hole. This is all it takes, eh? That's the new, uh, the new gas station. It comes to you. No petrol going through this hose? Yeah. Electric cars have long been considered too expensive and too inconvenient for most people, seen more as a toy for hobbyists and wealthy greenies. And what's this, your swipe card? My swap card ID. Shy intends to change all. Signed it so that again, it's it's uh, blocked until you swipe your card. Right. Opens up. You plug it in. That's it. And Shai was once an executive at a leading software company in Silicon Valley. He never intended to lead an automotive revolution. This is very late in my uh, in my life. I didn't have any aspirations to end oil when I was young. So I actually responded to a challenge, uh, first by Klaus Schwab, the head of the World Economic Forum, to mm -hmm. you know, do something to make the world a better place. And that was, for me, more of a hypothetical thinking. Um, ended up in a white paper. His idea was to run a country without oil by igniting the mainstream adoption of electric cars. And the president of this country, Shimon Peres, actually challenged me to turn the paper into reality. Um, and he called me up after a couple of days and said, uh, come to my office. And, uh, and basically started a cycle, about two weeks of meetings with everybody in government and business in Israel. And at the end of two weeks, we had, uh, we had sort of the milestones, the, the boundary conditions we had to meet. Find a car company, find $200 million, we let you do this in Israel. Fast forward six years, and his vision is on the verge of becoming reality. Where are we now? What's We're this? at the uh, Better Place Center right. uh, in, in Tel Aviv. And, and what uh, happens here? This is where people actually come to experience driving. You can actually see these guys that are walking in right now. Better Place Center is the first center in the whole world that presents a complete solution for electric transportation. The visitor center is built on the site of an old oil depot and the irony is intentional. In a symbolic way today, we spread a new concept to the world coming straight from here. So a bit of a... Over 75,000 people have toured the facility since it opened a year ago. They've all come to see Shire's solution to what's been the electric car's biggest problem. What about the range anxiety people have of worrying that the, the batteries are going to go flat? Well, I think if you have a fixed battery electric car, you should be worried, right? You're, you're tethered to your home. So this is a car which comes with a battery. But we, we actually address that with a switchable battery electric car. It might not look like much, but this is the heart of Agassi's solution. We brought in a disruptive thought that you're not bound to your battery. You're not bound to the range of that battery. You can exchange the battery and keep going. We'll be coming here and with your battery place card, we will recognize you and your car. This part will take you automatically to the spot where the battery should be switched. Um, it's like a car wash. Instead of spending hours recharging, customers will drive into a switch station and swap the depleted battery for a fully charged one. We will be using the battery switch stations if we're going to go long distance, if we're going to go for a trip, we're going to go now from Tel Aviv to Elat. It takes less time than it takes to refuel a petrol car, thanks to a mechanism adapted from the one that holds bombs in place on F-16 jets. By the end of the year, they hope to have over 40 switch stations across the country. And the switchable battery electric car allows you to use all the batteries that are on the road in any location you are, has a GPS that tells you how far you are from your next location and from the next switch station. It gets away from the anxiety. You actually are, you're always aware of, of where you are and whether you will make it to the next stop. And, um, and it becomes almost second nature not to think about it.
At the Frankfurt Motor Show two years ago, Renault agreed to mass produce an electric vehicle with a switchable battery. They committed to making 100,000 cars, named the Fluence ZE. It's the first mega deal for electric cars in history. There has not been a car since the Ford Model T that has been sold at 100,000 volume, driving on anything other than gasoline. And if you'll look back at history, today was the beginning of the electric era and potentially the end of the oil era. Sometimes um, people have to remind you to aim high. Uh, most, most of us are afraid of aiming high for fear of failure, and our biggest failure is that we aim too low. He's certainly aiming high, with plans to open his networks of charge spots and switching stations across the globe. The rollout has already begun in Denmark, Hawaii, Japan and Canada, and will soon be coming to Australia. This is the um, network operating centre. This is the, um, the hub, the backbone, if you want, of uh, running a network around a country. Somebody needs to manage that the current is coming in, that, that you know, nobody ran over a spot, that there are no emergencies. And, so you need to run it as, as a utility. You need to. But this we, is very small. You know, it's. Uh, you know, we, we actually from this center can manage any network in any country. Uh, guys, can you can you put a map on the screen? Israel, Denmark, any of the countries that uh, that are running. Thanks to Shire's computing background, the system will be able to balance the demand across the power grid, as well as micromanage its customers' needs. Uh, when you come in and knows that your distance from home is a certain distance, how much battery do you need, if you're, uh, if what time it is, based on that, are you at work, what's the probability you'll need to drive in the next few hours, all that information is used by the computer inside the car to give us a priority rating on your need for charge right now. So we are at 80% battery capacity. Uh, to get to 100% battery capacity, we need to charge for approximately one hour and, and 42 minutes. Turning Shire's dreams into a global reality is a massive undertaking. He's been pressuring world leaders for tax breaks for pollution-free cars. Shire's also had to drum up the hundreds of millions of dollars in investments. You know about who we are and what we're trying to achieve? Somewhere. Somewhere. So investment bank focused on utilities and infrastructure. But nowadays, potential investors come to him. Yeah. I have a better proposition. Okay. <laughs> I'm here to if you can do that, you can do my proposition. <laughs> wow. It wasn't long before Shai and these German bankers wanted to talk business privately. We need to end this. Okay, okay thank you, gentlemen. Thanks. And here we've got the, uh, the chart spot. So I went to speak with Better Place's first and largest investor. And this shows you the old world. Edan Ofer is an oil tycoon who's already put $220 million into Shire's company. What convinced you this was a good investment? The raw numbers made sense. You know, using electricity for driving a car, uh, the, the, the cost differential is so large that, we, that it, it made sense immediately. If Better Place doesn't succeed, a lot of money might go down the drain. I don't consider that as a possibility. Um, first of all, it's already succeeded. Four years ago, Shai Gassi said, I'm going to do, I'm going to have an electric car with the, the changes batteries that can drive, drive all over the country and we ha will have a system that controls the entire system vis-a-vis -vis the grid, the demand on the grid. So everything that he said that, that he will do, he did. And he obviously has big hopes for its future. I envision that Better Place will be a very significant company in the world. Uh, significant, I mean, some, it's a, kind of a name that everybody will recognize, like Apple today. It will be a brand that will be re well recognized by, by, by everybody on this, on this planet. Well, in every investment, there is a risk. 
Dr. Amit Moore is an energy economist and financial analyst. He's not entirely convinced battery switching will take off. Uh, here uh, we have um, a technology, a very ambitious entrepreneurs who are, uh, who are putting their money in uh, gambling on new technology. And gambling on new technology. Gambling on the penetration of new technology. But for Amit Moore, the biggest concern is environmental. Where is the electricity to charge these batteries going to come from? If in Australia and other countries will, continue, will produce all the electricity needed to, to, to charge batteries by more coal, so we are going to harm the environment rather than uh, having a free electric, uh, uh, um, rather than having a, a clean transportation. However, just last week, Better Place committed to using 100% clean energy for its Australian network. It's the largest renewable energy deal Australia has ever seen. An energy supply contract between Better Place and ActuAGL, uh, a long-term energy supply contract solely for zero emissions renewable electricity. This is the man leading the charge down under, former Labor MP Evan Thornley. This is going to happen quickly. By the end of 2013, more than half of Australia's drivers will be able to drive wherever they want, whenever they want, in an electric car. Now, why have you got an interest in Australia? Well, we did Israel and Denmark, and everybody started claiming that we can only do small countries and that we, we're focused on transportation islands that are tiny. And so we figured out if we did, you know, a big island, um, like Australia, then uh, we would be proving the point that this can work anywhere. You want to do the round table? Today, Shai is back at the visitor centre, selling his vision to a group of journalists from around the world. Within less than this decade, um, the number one selling car in the world will be an electric car in every market, in every country around the world. And the number of electric cars sold in that market that year will be higher than all gasoline cars put together. Some of the reporters are skeptical, but Shai is determined to win them over. 10 years ago, you know what was the number one music player in the world? You, you can't remember it, but it was called Walkman, yeah. right? Made by Sony, right? The same company that makes this camera. Um, if I told you back then, 10 years ago, 2001, that within a decade there won't be something called Walkman, you'd say, nah, it's impossible. Who would, who would take their place? There's no other company in the world that will take their place. If I told you that the company will take their place has never made a music player, you'd say, nah, these things don't happen. Definitely not that fast. It was very impressive. It was smooth, it was quiet. Um, it felt almost like we were floating on air. What did you think? Fantastic. Would you buy one? In a heartbeat. So what I need is, I need a changing station yeah. halfway between Boston and Cuichy, Vermont. Right. All wheel drive, and I'm there. Do you think uh, done. gas done. cars are on the way out? I hope, yeah, certainly hope so. Ride? I hope yeah. gas is done. Too many bad things with gas cars. And do you think GM and Ford will eventually change? I have hope to. so. I certainly hope so. If they don't, maybe no one will buy their cars. Ultimately, it's ordinary people like these visitors that will determine the fate of Shire's dream. It's the, it's the biggest financial opportunity the world has ever seen. All right? We, we're seeing a $10 trillion shift a year, annual $10 trillion shift, happening in a span of one decade. Never happened before. This is the internet with another zero.